Okay, so how much algebra do you know? So this is our second quiz in this uh, new series that I'm doing. Uh, it's called Algebra Quizzes. You can find, uh, find that playlist on my channel. And if you want, you can take quiz one. But these are going to be random pop quizzes about our favorite uh, topic, algebra. So if you're learning algebra, this is going to be useful. Now, keep in mind that you may not have learned uh, the topic yet on some of these questions. And if that's the case, if you haven't learned it, then don't stress out. Just be like, I don't think I've learned this. But if you've taken algebra and you're just kind of reviewing, well, then, you know, this is uh, stuff that you should know. Just remember uh, one thing, just because you've taken algebra or math does not mean that you've learned or fully mastered algebra. And that's, you know, uh, semi-normal. Uh, let me just tell you very quickly, when you take pre-algebra, Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, what you're doing oftentimes here, well, not oftentimes, basically most curriculums, in Algebra 1, you're effectively relearning pre-algebra, and then you're learning new stuff. In Algebra 2, you are relearning uh, a lot of what you learned in Algebra 1 and learning new stuff. So, you know, there is this constant cycle of, you know, learning, reviewing, relearning, practicing, you know, building upon that knowledge. So, you know, that's the whole idea of these quizzes is just to continue to review topics that, you know, you've studied. Or if you haven't studied, then, you know, you'll you'll learn a little bit here as well. So either way, this little quiz will be worth your time. And again, if you want to take the first quiz, you just go to my uh, algebra quiz playlist on my channel. I'm just going to continue to do these little quizzes for your benefit, for your practice. So we're going to get to this quiz here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But basically, I offer uh, 100 plus different type of math courses. So obviously, courses like algebra, geometry, algebra 2, college algebra, pre-algebra. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, very soon. But I have a lot of specialty courses, test preparation courses like the SAT, ACT, GED, or teacher certification exams. Um, entrance exams, college placement exams. So if you're studying for a particular type of test that involves mathematics, I likely have a specific math course uh, for that test. So again, my program has taken me years to build and they're very high quality, uh, all video based. So again, if you're interested, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. Now, one thing, if you are a math student, you just need to know the golden rule of the universe of mathematics. <laughs> and that is those students who take Great math notes almost always have uh, great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who don't take uh, math notes or take sloppy math notes or maybe take math notes occasionally, maybe every other Tuesday, they'll take math notes for a few minutes because they're best friends in the class and they take better notes than they do, and they'll just take those notes. But, you know, a lot of people have photo photographic memories. I've heard this one, you know, um, plenty of times. Like, I don't need to take notes. I just remember everything I see. Well, when you're learning... A lot of mathematics information, there's a lot of information. That's a pretty risky uh, strategy to say, I'm not going to take notes. Listen, I'm just going to tell you, bottom line, you need to take notes. you got to really, really work at this. And I think that's why a lot of students struggle uh, in mathematics is they don't, they don't realize, they think that note-taking is optional. Note-taking is not optional. You have to work at it, and it's a skill that you develop over time. Okay, so if you're not there yet with your notes, and if you're sloppy and you're not taking notes, listen, I was that person, okay, way back in the good old days, but I paid a price for it, right? So just telling you as a teacher, you know, this is a golden rule of math. So work on your math notes, get better at it, but in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so... We're going to get into some algebra here. Uh, again, uh, if you don't, if you haven't studied the topic, uh, don't panic. Okay, You'd be like, all right, I just haven't learned this. You know, doesn't uh, I don't uh, recognize this you know type of question. So the one thing I do want to say here is that I'm not going to be teaching about every every one of these particular topics. If you want to learn more about these topics, I have hundreds and hundreds of videos in my uh, various playlists. My algebra playlist obviously would be the place to look for these particular topics. But let's get into the questions. 
and I'm going to give you a chance to answer them before I actually solve them. So we have three questions. I like to keep a uh, little pop quizzes, three questions, totally random topics uh, in algebra. Okay, so here's our first question. I'd like you to simplify this. Four times the square root of xy times three times the square root of x. Fully simplify this. Number two, I have a nice equation here for you. I'd like you to uh, solve that equation. And number three, I'd like you to know what the slope of this line is. 2x plus 3y is equal to 7. Tell me the slope of the line. Again, I'm not going to teach comprehensively completely about these particular topics, but I will give you some guidance uh, as I go through the explanations. Now, if you're a superstar in algebra, you should be able to knock this quiz out in like three minutes, no more than five minutes. Now, some of you might be like, you know, doing this kind of thing. What are you talking about? Three minutes? That's crazy. Well, no, it's not crazy if you know this stuff. If you know it, you'll know what to do, okay? But if it takes you 10 minutes, even 15 minutes, and you get the answers right, well, listen, you're still good to go, all right? whole idea is to give you feedback on what you know and what you don't know, okay? All right, so if you don't want to see the solutions, go ahead and pause the videos because I'm going to get into number one. Okay, here we go. So how do we uh, simplify this? Well, we're talking about multiplication, and we have uh, square roots. So you need to know that you can... When you square root, like the square root of A times the square root of B, well, there's a property, okay, there's some rules when we're dealing with square roots, that is equal to the square root of A times B, okay? So if I um, have this product, I can break it up into factors or I can write it this way, okay? And that's what we're going to need to use in this situation. So um, I have 4 times this, times this, times this, times this, so I can... Just multiply the numbers together. So 4 times 3, that's 12. Now I'm going to multiply everything inside the square roots. Now it's important to remember that this is a square root and this is a square root. This is not like a cube root and this is not a square root. If that's the case, I couldn't do this. All right. So again, you know, you really need to study uh, radicals and square roots to really, really understand this if you're totally lost. But this is, you know, even if you haven't learned this before, you're, you should be able to pick up some information here. Okay, so how is this going to look? Well, it's going to be x, uh, y times x. So x, y times x, which, of course, is equal to 12 times the square root of x squared y. Okay, now... If you uh, wrote this as your final answer, I would not give you full credit, okay? Uh, you're not done yet. So here, we have 12 square root of x squared y. We have to simplify out completely. And in algebra, that means if we have square roots here inside this radical, uh, we should simplify this. So this I could write as 12 times the square root of x squared times the square root of y. Now, why would I do that? Because I can take out this this x squared. I can um, is equal to x, right? This is a perfect square, and I can I can uh, take out an x. In other words, the square root of x squared is x. So I don't want to write it this way. So I want to take that out. So our answer will be 12x times the square root of y. That is the answer, okay? So if you got that right, give yourself a happy face and one or two stars and, you know, uh, maybe a little A-plus there, okay? Not a big A-plus because you'll have to kind of see how you did with the rest of uh, the answers there. But if you got that right, that's pretty good, okay? Pretty good start. Now, um, again, if you're totally lost, you want to go into my algebra playlist and check out uh, Square Roots. I have a lot of different videos on it. Uh, but if you really, really want to learn this stuff, you want to jump into my algebra course. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this so I can get some, well, let's let's see if I can, yeah, now let me erase this, okay? The reason why I'm erasing this, and uh, you can always rewind the video if you want to see that solution, is I want to give myself a little room here to do this problem. Okay, so what kind of equation are we dealing with? Hopefully, you're talking back to your, you know, phone or your computer. You're saying a quadratic equation. And if you got that uh, right, then that's pretty good. Okay, pretty good start. So this is a quadratic equation, meaning, okay, we're going to have two solutions. So how do I solve this? Well, you always try to factor if you can solve 
um, uh, when you're solving quadratic equations, a couple of things that we need to kind of check on first. First thing is we want to make sure it's set equal to zero, and this one is. So we look over here to the left-hand side, and we're like, can I factor this? And this is definitely factorable. So how do I factor 8x squared minus 2x? Well, I can factor out a 2x. That leaves me with 4x right there minus 1. That's equal to 0. Okay, so let's just check 2x times 4x. Yes, that's going to give me back to 8x squared. And then 2x times this 1, that gives me back to 2x. Okay, so those are the correct factors. Now, the reason why we love uh, to factor when something said equal to 0 is because we can use something called the zero product um, uh, property. Okay, meaning, let's just look at this. This thing, okay, whatever this is, times this is equal to 0. If I was to tell you or ask you, hey, I got two numbers here, I got two numbers, and when I multiply those numbers, my answer is 0. Okay, what does this tell me about this number or this number or both of these numbers? Well, the only way you're going to get zero as an answer is this guy's got to be equal to zero or this guy's got to be equal to zero or both of these are going to be zero. That's the only way you can get zero um, as an answer of a product, okay, is uh, one of these guys or both of these guys are equal to zero. Well, it turns out when we're solving uh, these equations, when things are when the factors are set equal to zero, we, we set each factor equal to zero and solve for the variables. So 2x is equal to 0 and 4x minus 1 is equal to 0. So here uh, 2x is equal to 0. That's a super easy equation to solve. x is equal to 0. That's one of my solutions. Remember I have two solutions. I'm dealing with the quadratic equation and then we'll go ahead and, and uh, deal with this. I'm going to move the 1 over to the other side and x is equal to 1 over 4. That is my second solution. Okay. All right, so if you got that right, definitely give yourself a nice big happy face and maybe two or three stars, and you know that was really good, okay? Because what did you know uh, how to do in this particular um, problem if you got this right? Well, you recognized it was a quadratic equation, okay? Two, um, you showed me that you knew how to factor. Now, if you man, if you did this using a quadratic formula, then uh, you know. Mm, you still get, you know, give yourself credit. If you got the answer right, give yourself credit. But you always want to have the most, you always want to approach math using the most effective paths, okay? Remember, there's not just one way to solve problems. There's often uh, multiple ways, but you always want to, you know, use the most efficient ways. But if you got this right, that's very, very good. Okay, so that is our second question. Let me go ahead and erase this here. Of course, you can rewind the video to see the answers. I just want to, you uh, uh, keep my screen right here so we can kind of look at these other questions. So that is our second problem. So what is the slope of 2x plus 3y equals 7? All right, so 2x plus 3y is equal to 7. So there's a couple different ways you can uh, solve this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this linear equation in y equals mx plus b form because when I do that, I know that m uh, that coefficient in front of the x is the slope, okay? So if that's what you were thinking, and that's very good. Now, there is another approach here. There's a little formula for the slope when lines are written in standard form, but uh, a lot of students tend to forget that. No problems. Let's go ahead and rewrite this in terms of y. So I have 2x plus 3y is equal to 7. I have to rewrite this in terms of y, okay? So in other words, we have to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. That gives me 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. Okay, so at this point, I need uh, to get my y by itself. and just divide everything by 3, and I get y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 7 thirds. I don't really care about that. Okay, because that is uh, my uh, y-intercept. Okay, I care about this. That is the slope. So the slope here is negative two-thirds. That's the slope of this line. And uh, if you uh, solve this differently, that's perfectly fine. As long as you got the right answer, that is what counts. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, this you took a lot longer than three minutes. Well, yeah, I'm explaining this as well, right? I'm explaining this. If you know what you're doing, you can be like, okay, boop, boop, boop. 
and you know knock these problems out. Now, if this was an actual pop quiz, let me just <clears throat> state something here. It's uh, let's say that your teacher, and this is uh, goes to some of the other things I stress about doing well in mathematics. Let's say this was a pop quiz, and you were to, you, know, you did these prompts in uh, three minutes, but your teacher said. Uh, you have, oh, I don't know, eight minutes to do the quiz, okay, or 10 minutes to do the quiz. Uh, very typical type of thing. Probably your teacher would give you 10 minutes to do a little pop quiz. Now, let's say you were like, I know this, boom, 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 boom. Uh, you're done in three minutes. What do you do? What do you do? Okay, do you turn your quiz in early to your teacher, all right? I hope you don't do that. Never, ever, ever turn your quiz in early if you have extra time, okay? If you have extra time, don't doze off. What I want you to do is to go back and grade your work. Look for errors, okay? Um, and just assume that 75% of the time you're going to be making a mistake someplace, right? Try to hunt down that mistake. Try to look for it and like, hey, we're, did I make an error? You know, be a little paranoid about your work. That's not a bad thing, okay? <laughs> Double check, triple check. Use up that time, but never turn in your work early, okay? All right, so, you know, all this good experience that I'm passing on to you, that's the whole idea, you know? I want to get you to, you know, ace algebra, ace mathematics, you know, I'm teaching you, I'm telling you things that, you know, are not in made up, okay? This comes from, I mean, there's a lot of things I can't do. One thing I can, uh, that I do pretty well is teach math. Why is that the case? Not because I have a degree in math or a master's degree. That's not the, the reason why I teach math pretty well. It's because I've been doing it for a long, 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 long time, and I've gotten better. It's just, it's just normal, right? Anything that you're passionate about and you do for a long period of time, you're going to improve. And in mathematics, it's the same thing, okay? Even if you have an aptitude for math, you're not going to get better at it if you don't work at it. You have to have consistency, and, you know, you got to uh, hopefully have a teacher that you like and understand. And if that's me, then that's excellent, okay? Because that's what I am trying to do. My mission is to help all you out there in YouTube land, you know, love math. And if you love this video, okay, or if you enjoyed it or even liked it, please consider smashing that like button. I would certainly appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Again, I have hundreds and hundreds of videos. been on YouTube for 10 plus years. It is a great platform for, for someone like myself who is obsessed with teaching math. Okay, but again, if you uh, want my best math uh, resources, just check out the links in the description of this video. All right, so with that being said, stay tuned. I will be doing more quizzes in the future, uh, but I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.